Hi everyone and welcome to week 49. Okay, this week we are going to start our journey into the world of the Thor Polysonic Synthesizer. Now since we're going to be covering some fairly advanced synthesis techniques as we get into Thor, I strongly suggest that you go back and review some of the other synth school series starting with week 44 in the subtractor if you haven't been following along up to now. Okay then, let's get into this lovely little beast of a synth. We called Thor a polysonic synthesizer because it's capable of many different types of textures as a result of its multiple oscillator types, filter types, CV and audio routing capabilities, and modulation possibilities using its modulation matrix, as well as a powerful step sequencer. I'm going to start this series beginning with the oscillator section by taking a look at four of the different types of oscillators you can choose from and explain exactly what type of textures and sounds each one can be used to create. First off, you need to expand Thor so you can see all of its parameters by clicking the Show Programmer button here. Thor has three oscillator slots and six different oscillator types. You select which oscillator type you are using for each slot by using this drop-down arrow here. The six different oscillator types are Analog, Wavetable, Phase Modulation, FM pair, multi-oscillator, and noise. The analog oscillator is a classic analog oscillator with four standard waveforms, similar to what we learned about on the subtractor, but these are completely new waveforms and are not borrowed from the subtractor waveforms at all. The four available waveforms are from the top down as displayed, sawtooth, pulse, triangle, and sine, and can be selected by either clicking on the waveform or clicking this button here. This PW mod parameter controls pulse width, and it only works when you have selected a pulse waveform. It can be modulated using any number of modulation sources, like LFO or the mod envelope, for example. If you set it to a value of 64, you get a perfect square wave which to my ears sounds very much like the square wave on older Roland analog synths like the SH-101. As you can hear, the analog oscillator is great for creating anything from buzzy leads and basses to hollow and woody sounds, as well as pure sine tones. Lots of these types of sounds are used in many different music genres today. Wavetable oscillators have been the basis of several popular vintage synths like the PPG, Korg Wavestation, and others. With the wavetable oscillator, you have the choice of 32 different wavetables. Each wavetable contains several different waveforms, some even up to 64. By using an envelope or an LFO as a mod source, you could sweep through a wavetable to produce textural variations, similar to what we covered in weeks 47 and 48 on the Maelstrom. The parameters you can adjust are as follows. Position is a modifier parameter and controls the position within the selected wavetable meaning which waveform is being heard. By modulating the position, you can sweep through the waveforms in the selected wavetable. You can also use a single static waveform in a wavetable if you want, by not applying any modulation to this parameter. The crossfade button determines whether the change between waveforms in a wavetable should be abrupt or step sounding, with crossfade off, or smooth, with crossfade on. You select the wavetable by using the up and down buttons or by clicking in the wavetable display. Some of the wavetables have waveforms that follow a harmonic series sequentially. For example, each following waveform might add a harmonic. Some may produce a sound similar to oscillator sync when swept, and other wavetables are simply mixed waveforms. The last 11 wavetables are based on wavetables that were used in the original PPG 2.3 synthesizer. Wavetable synthesis is very good for creating sounds that have motion or textural changes when you hold notes, like pads or special effects. 
One of my personal favorites, the phase modulation oscillator, is inspired by the Casio CZ series of synthesizers. Phase modulation is based on modulating the phase of digital waveforms to emulate common filter characteristics. You have a first and second waveform here which can be combined. Instead of mixing the two waveforms, they are played in series, one after the other. This adds a fundamental one octave below the pitch of the original sound. The PM parameter changes the shape of the wave, much like a filter does. The higher the value, the more extreme of an effect you will get. The following waveforms, sequentially from the first, are available as the first waveform. Sawtooth, square, pulse, pulse and sine, sine and flat or half sine, sine times saw, sine times sine, and sine times pulse. The last three waveforms could be described as resonant, since these were originally meant to simulate filter resonance. They didn't really do this very accurately, but nevertheless, they played an important part of the sound. The second waveform has the same available waveforms, except for the last three, and it can also be bypassed altogether. You can combine waveforms freely, but it's not possible to combine two resonant waveforms since they're not available on the second waveform slot. Phase modulation is a very unique form of synthesis and produces sounds that are very characteristic. If you've not checked out the Discovering Reason articles on our website, I suggest that you do, especially the one that Gordon Reed created on phase modulation synthesis, which is part 25, Thor Demystified number 7, which you can find under the Substance section of our website at this link. As you can tell by the name, the FM pair oscillator generates FM, where one oscillator, the carrier, is frequency modulated by a second oscillator, the modulator. Although very simple to use, unlike most hardware FM synths used to be, this oscillator can produce a very wide range of FM sounds. The carrier and modulator selector buttons set the frequency ratio between these two oscillators, and the range is from 1 to 32. The frequency ratio is what determines the basic frequency content, which in turn affects the timbre of the sound. The FM knob sets the amount of frequency modulation. This is also the modifier parameter. If FM amount is set to zero, then there is no FM and the output will be a pure sine wave. If you set the FM amount to zero and step through the values of the carrier oscillator, you can hear that the pitch is changed according to the harmonic series. Stepping through the mod oscillator values will change the pitch in the same way, although FM amount has to be set to a value other than zero to be able to hear it. So as an example, a setting of 2 and 2 is the same wave shape as 1 and 1, but it's one octave higher in pitch. 3 and 3 is the same wave shape as 2 and 2, but again, a fifth higher in pitch, and so on. FM synthesis can create anything from bell or electric piano-like tones, like a Yamaha DX7 for example, to complete sonic mayhem. And the more you experiment with where and how you route audio between the oscillator slots, you can come up with some very interesting results. And again, I recommend that you read up on the Discovering Reason articles that Gordon Reed created explaining FM synthesis in more depth, because he really goes into quite some detail on FM synthesis and different explanations on how it works and different routings. Next week, we're going to continue looking at the remaining two oscillator types, the multi-oscillator and the noise oscillator. And we're also going to have a look at oscillator sync, amplitude modulation, and begin to look at the filter section of Thor as well. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks again. I'm James Bernard from Propellerhead Software, and I'll see you soon.